Hello, I'm Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life, and sometimes I get asked questions that are a little bit out of the video game realm. And uh, today I decided that I was going to entertain a question from um, his uh, YouTube name is Raw Talent. And uh, he hit upon one of my other hobbies, one of my passions, which is, um, you know, I like doing a lot of photography and film. And uh, it's not just about being in front of the camera like I am right now. I also enjoy going out and uh, shooting pictures and, um, and you know, really, um, you know, just seeing what kind of incredible things I can capture on camera. Um, and in fact, at the end of this video, I'll uh, put up some of my pictures uh, that, um, that I especially like and, um, I don't know, set them to music or something like that. Something fun. Anyway, um, and in fact, uh, there was one video that I did that was shot... Uh, well, actually, so I'm right now, I'm on a regular film camera. Um, well, meaning that, you know, like movie film camera, it's not really old film. It's all digital these days. But, uh, you know, I have in the past shot uh, some of my film on DSLRs. And what I've got here is, this is um, my um, DSLR camera. And it's, um, it's a Canon 5D Mark II. And uh, they got newer ones out. I wish I could afford them. Haven't been able to. Um, and, you know, I, <clears throat> even though right now I have been uh, selling off all of my extra stuff, uh, working on uh, trying to achieve a goal of uh, getting a nearly new motorcycle, something that's very dependable now that I live in the South and I can ride almost every day, everywhere. And, um, but I have not been willing to sell my camera, uh, nor the camera that I'm filming this on. And um, because both of these are my passion, and I, and I know that if I sold these items, it'd take me a long time to be able to get them again. Now, Mr. Raw Talent asks, he says that um, he loves photography, and uh, he's seen some of my uh, photography and was commenting on it, and he is um, thinking about getting an SLR. And uh, these days are called DSLRs. The D stands for digital. And the, um, he was wondering, you know, how he should choose. What, what it is that um, makes the difference in these. So let me just tell you how I chose to go with what I've got here, which I went with Canon. And uh, really, there are two major players in uh, the camera market. There is Canon and there's Nikon. Uh, there are others. There's like Pentax, there's Sony, there's uh, a couple of other uh, players in the digital uh, DSLR realm. But really, it comes down to support. And uh, when you, uh, let me equate it to like cell phones. So there's two major players in the cell phone market. There's iOS, which is Apple, and there's Android, which is Google. And both of those are major players, and you can go and get a, like a Nokia phone that has the Nokia OS, or you can go get a Windows phone that has the Windows OS, and, and you can find some accessories for those and everything, but your options are really limited compared to the larger market. And it doesn't mean that the, those choices are not right if that's what you need and want, it just means that um, there's less support out there. So the reason to go if you're in photography with uh, a digital SLR, is the fact that the lenses are interchangeable. And let me show you what I mean by that. This right here is, um, uh, it. I can hit this and I can release and voila. Okay, so if I'm out shooting with this one, which this one is uh, a 24 to 105 lens, and it, um, in, in the point-and-shoot cameras, they do uh, multiples of magnification. In uh, the digital SLR uh, world, they do it in, um, in uh, millimeters. And so 
a uh, 24 is really kind of a wide angle. It's very pulled very far back. It's not as far back as you can go because you can go further back with some lenses. Uh, and the 105 is not as far as you can go. You can go way up higher. You can get up, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred. So with this is something that I would shoot people with. Um, and <laughs> no, not like with guns, with the camera. Um, and so I would shoot, um, um, portraits with this. I may also shoot landscapes and stuff. Uh, if I'm getting into a, a really, you know, expansive area um, or shooting like uh, rooms or something like that, I might put on a wide angle lens so I can capture more. But let me show you something here. I've got another one of my lenses here. And this lens is a, um, it is a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. It's pretty big. And um, I, I'll put this one on the camera and you can see the difference. Um, let's see here. I have to be really careful about how I do this. There's some, there's some really things you really got to watch out for. One is you need to not drop them. <laughs> but also you do not want to get any dust whatsoever in the camera um, because you'll have to clean it. You know, I mean, you're really opening it up. It's like you know, opening up the chest of a camera. You don't want to get anything in there. And so, um, let's see here. I'm going to prep my lenses and uh, make sure the cap is ready to take off. Okay, so pull this one off. This. And I should be holding it upside down because less dust falls in whenever you hold it upside down. Cover up this lens. And then we're going to put this one on and voila it's now a new camera um, in in the respects of you know what i can view with it now this this one happens to be one to 400 and it extends out and it's 100 down here 400 out here um, this is what i shoot a lot of my uh, wildlife with and it uh it um is, um, you know, it's hard to get close to the wildlife. And so um, I'll use something like that uh, to shoot the wildlife. I also just shot uh, some boat races here um, where they had boats that were going, I don't know, they were going 120 miles an hour out on the sound out here. Um, that's very fast for boats. And I used the big lens and uh, actually I, I ended up getting so close, I only took one lens with me um, because I figured I was gonna be way far back and I wouldn't need anything else, but I ended up getting so close to the boats um, that I um, had to have it all the way back at 100 just to see them. So now this, um, the, the reason that you choose Nikon or Canon is because you're gonna invest a lot of money in lenses. Now you can get cheap lenses, and, but there is a difference in the photography of a cheap lens and a more expensive lens. And you can see the difference, but the price difference is astronomical as well. And so the, the I, I'm not sure how much I paid for that 100 to 400 um, lens. Um, I suspect it was around $2,000. And now you can get uh, lenses. Um, I've seen some lenses for a couple hundred dollars that will go out even further than that. But there is a difference in the quality of the glass, and so you may get the magnification, but um, the beauty, the, the, the colors that you're able to capture and everything won't be nearly as vibrant, and it may not be nearly as crisp. And uh, so, you know, if you're just trying to get distance, you can buy a cheap lens. I mean, I've seen some out there for a couple hundred bucks. They'll do like 1,300 millimeter. And at 1,300 millimeter, you better be on a tripod every little movement is going to um, show up in that. But, um, so there are cheap lenses, but um, you know, you want to invest in at least a few good lenses. And you'll spend more on the lenses than you will on the camera body. And uh, now, so you just have to decide whether or not Canon is right for you or Nikon. And I went with Canon because Canon makes a lot of its own glass and it makes, does a lot of glass being the lenses. And, and I really enjoy um, 
uh, some of the features that they have. Nikon has some other features. And uh, so you got to kind of do some research. I made my choice uh, several years ago. And um, it was so that I could upgrade my camera body here. So that now they've come out with the 5D Mark III. And I would love to have it. But it's like $3,000. I can't afford it. I just can't. So, let me show you a cheaper way to get into this. Um, so, I have here, this is, um, well actually let me, before I show you this, this right here is a uh, box for a used uh, camera. And uh, I was able to get this on eBay, and um, this is a, uh, uh, Canon 20D, uh, it, the, the beauty of this thing is that it uses the same lenses that I've got already. And so let me uh, pull this out here. So I, I got this used on eBay and um, when I bought it, 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 I got it for about $300. And that's about how much you'll pay for a good uh, point and shoot camera. So what I want to show you here is, is that it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money to get started in using a DSLR. Um, now, this, uh, this camera, you know, it's, it's older. I don't know how old it is. It's maybe six or seven years old, but um, it does, I believe, I believe it's about 6.8 megapixel. Um, the other one over there is 21.1 megapixel, but I can tell you something that um, the megapixels don't matter nearly as much as the quality of the camera because this camera at 6.8 megapixel can take far better pictures than another point and shoot that is like 8 or 10 megapixel. And uh, so when you're, when you're switching these realms, it doesn't matter nearly as much. Now, if you're blowing them up to billboard size or something like that, it matters. But... Um, you know, the, the, it doesn't matter for your personal use. Um, this one came with this lens right here. And um, this lens right here, I got, I got real lucky on eBay. This lens is a $300 lens on eBay and I uh, used. And um, this camera goes for about $200 used on eBay for just the body, not the lens. And so I got it for about $300 total because they didn't mark the lens um, as, you know, part of the auction. Um, they, they said it had a lens and I went and studied the pictures and looked at it and looked up just the lens and figured out that the lens was actually worth more than the camera. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'm going to bid on this. And I won it. I was really surprised that I won it because I figured some other people would pick up on that, but I got it. So this right here, um, this one is is uh, not uh, my camera. This was uh, this was a gift to someone, and um, so I don't own it anymore. But um, I just wanted to show it as an example of getting started in this uh, a lot cheaper. And so it has all of the features that my big one has, minus just a couple of new advancements. But here's the beauty of it. You can get into a camera like this for so much cheaper. And then you can, as you start buying lenses to, to meet your different needs and do you know different um, uh, stuff with them, you can upgrade your body here and to the next level. And so, say you got enough money to buy a 30D, which is just a little bit better than this 20D, or a 40D, or a 50D. And um, then, you know, you can buy that and trade out just the body and uh, keep all of your lenses. And um, these all use CF cards. And, um, so you get to use the same memory in all of these. Um, there are a couple of exceptions, but not many. Uh, most all of them use these CF cards, so you don't have to buy memory again. And um, this is a professional grade camera. You can set every setting manually on this and take beautiful pictures. So 
Anyway, I just wanted to show you that and show you how what my methodology is on why I'm going a DSLR and why I picked a particular brand. And um, and I went with Canon. Uh, and uh, you know the the lenses like this, you can get the cheapest version for about um, you know of this lens for for about a hundred bucks. Um, or you can, for the same equivalent, you can pay um, two thousand dollars, depending on the the range. Um, but let me show you just one more thing, and this this is let me set this down so I don't drop it. This is my favorite lens, and my favorite lens here happens to be the smallest one. This lens is what I use for portraits. Uh, of people, and um, it is really, really soft. Uh, it um, it creates a nice blur in the background, and um, and this is also my cheapest lens. So this lens, uh, from my my personal lenses that I use, was about three hundred dollars, and it is the best three hundred dollars spent with my camera. Um, this is what's known as a prime lens. It's 50 millimeters. It doesn't it doesn't um, zoom at all, and it's just a, a single focus. and And it's um, there's not much glass in it. You can uh, see me upside down there. Hey, look at me. <laughs> you know. So it um, this is um, just beautiful for um, for doing. Um, portraits and stuff, which people are actually who I like to shoot best. So more than animals or anything else. And um, this lens, I'll call it the beauty lens, because I've taken some amazing, amazing pictures with this of people. And um, and it's my cheapest lens. It's, it's, this is the one that is on my camera most of the time. And uh, so it doesn't have to be really expensive. And this lens will fit on that used camera. So, um, you know, doesn't, isn't going to cost you a whole lot to get into it. Uh, you know, I'll, um, I'll link to the camera section on uh, Amazon uh, in the description. And the reason I'm going to do that is because, you know, I don't really expect you to go out and buy off of Amazon, you know, a brand new camera or anything. But um, that's part of how I make a living is by um, referring sales, you know, doing affiliate marketing. So if you are into buying lenses or cameras, or whatnot, click that link. I'll get a few, uh, you know, credits for um, you having made a purchase through it. Um, and uh, you know, if you appreciate this video, if you don't care, don't click it. So uh, anyway, uh, now let me show you some of my pictures, and uh, I'm just going to put up some with some music here of uh, some of my uh, favorite pictures that I've taken. Uh, all of these are with my Canon cameras. And um, I was not a professional photographer whenever I started. In fact, I still don't consider myself to be a professional. I just happen to get lucky with some really good shots. So enjoy and uh, take care. I'll talk to you all later. Now check out my pictures.